This news is funded by viewers like you. Please support our work at democracynow.org slash give. This is Democracy Now!, democracynow.org, The War and Peace Report. I'm Amy Goodman. We end today's show looking at Hurricane Helene as the Category 4 storm tore through the southeastern United States, leaving nearly 100 people dead in a trail of devastation. The storm triggered catastrophic flooding, tornado damage, downed trees, submerged entire neighborhoods in water across Florida, Georgia, Virginia, Tennessee, and North and South Carolina. At least 30 deaths were reported in a single county in North Carolina, Buncombe County, where the city of Asheville has been cut off after the uh, Swan. Noah River crested six feet above previous records, flooding entire neighborhoods. Officials say the death toll is likely to rise, as many more are still missing. Hundreds of roads remain blocked by mudslides and standing water, hindering rescue efforts and the delivery of vital aid and supplies. Meanwhile, more than two million customers remain without power as of Monday, while there's limited phone and communications access. In North Carolina, city officials say Asheville residents may not have access to clean water for weeks after Helene's severely damaged its water treatment plant and piping system. Many state residents criticized officials for failing to share accurate information about the severity of the storm ahead of it making landfall. Hurricane Helene made landfall Friday in Florida's Big Bend, fueled by abnormally warm water in the Gulf of Mexico. On Saturday, Greenpeace posted on social media that, quote, Hurricane Colleen must be a wake-up call for climate justice. For more, we go to Raleigh, North Carolina, where we're joined by Peter Kalmus, climate activist, climate scientist at NASA's Jet Propulsion Lab. He's speaking on his own behalf, not on behalf of NASA. Uh, Peter, can you talk about the link between what has taken place in the southeastern United States and the climate catastrophe, climate change? Yeah, so um, the planet's overheating. It's irreversible. It's caused by the fossil fuel industry. And th the reason I say industry specifically and not fossil fuels is because this industry has been systematically lying and blocking action for almost 50 years, for decades and decades. And they've said publicly, uh, testifying in front of Congress, that they plan to continue systematically blocking action. And this will get worse as the planet continues to get hotter. It's getting hotter every day. Every day we continue burning fossil fuels and allowing this industry to continue spreading disinformation and blocking action, the planet gets hotter. Hotter ocean fuels these storms, causes them to intensify more rapidly, causes them to get much more powerful. And a hotter atmosphere, because we're, we're living on an over, currently overheating planet, hotter atmosphere holds more water. So we get these intense, intense rainfalls, which cause the sorts of flooding that's happening uh, right now. It's still high waters in the western part of my state. Um, I think that this is the most evil thing uh, that it's possible to imagine, that fossil fuel executives and lobbyists will continue to lie so that they can line their bank accounts more at the irreversible expense of our planet and the future of humanity. I saw you at uh, Climate Week um, this mm -hmm. past week here in New York City. Uh, among the actions that took place was people attempting to shut down Citibank for funding, continuing to fund fossil fuel projects. The day that I was covering it, 31 people were arrested. Mm -hmm. um, can you talk about the significance of these actions. I mean, you're a scientist. You, too, have been arrested uh, protesting issues around climate change and entities that are involved in uh, fueling uh, climate change. What effect does activism have on the scientists? You're both. Well, yeah, I feel desperate as a climate scientist. I've been sounding the alarm since 2006. Other scientists have been sounding it for far longer. Uh, Dr. James Hansen in the 80s, even back before that. And we've been completely ignored. You get politicians, even like President Biden, even Democrats, saying things that, like, we listen to the scientists. And then, uh, you know, the last presidential debate, we had uh, Trump saying this is a hoax and giving word salad with China, and then uh, Vice President Harris saying climate change is real, but we're going to expand fracking, right? And that's the cause of climate change. So we're, we're living in this strange dystopia where scientists are being completely ignored. So I personally don't know what else to do. Um, I've tried a lot of different kinds of activism. Uh, civil disobedience has 
by far been the most effective, the most effective in building the movement, inspiring other activists, getting this urgency. So we need the public to, to have two things before, I, I think, before we're going to be able to act, uh, before we're going to hold these politicians to account. We need urgency and we need cause. And the public, in my opinion, doesn't know those two things. Like They don't have the sense that this is existentially urgent, that this is irreversible. However hot the planet gets, that's how hot it's going to stay for the rest of our lives, for our children's lives, grandchildren, many, many generations. And they don't know cause. There's a lot of confusion. This is caused by the fossil fuel industry. So if we want to stop this, preserve what we can, we need to know that that's the cause, that they're blocking action, and we have to target that. Financing from the banks is a huge part of this. Uh, they're still expanding new fossil fuel projects, like the Mountain Valley Pipeline in my state and in Virginia, which is creating uh, natural gas for export that we don't even need in America, just so these fat cats like Joe Manchin can get more rich. People don't understand this, and they need to know urgency. This is irreversible. These storms, heat waves, floods, crop failures, uh, migrants, all of this destabilization is going to get worse. It seems like we're, you know, just uh, as humans more interested in blowing each other up than being grateful and preserving this absolute jewel of a planet that has given, gives us all of this life, gives us literally everything. And it seems like we're not able to get our act together. And, you know, we, we have everything we need to stop this problem. We have solar panels, we have battery storage, we have wind. Uh, if there was will, if the media let people know, if the presidents and world leaders let people know urgency and cause, I think we would solve this so incredibly fast. But there's just confusion out there. Uh, the Republican Party is still deeply in denial. The, Democrat, the Democratic Party is still deeply in denial. And it's just a human tragedy unfolding in real time. And I'm, I'm just so disappointed at everyone right now. Dr. Not Con everyone, but most people. Dr. Khan, let's talk specifically about the media. Um, it's the way people mm -hmm. uh, come to understand the world outside of their own conversations and their reading. Uh, can you talk about how the media addresses climate change? Yeah, so I was reading some articles about the flooding in western North Carolina in the New York Times. The articles did not even mention climate change, not a single mention. This is what's driving it. And then there's the larger context of irreversible global overheating, which I've already mentioned. It's caused by the fossil fuel industry. They've been lying and blocking action systematically for decades, and this impact will get worse. We'll still we'll see even worse storms in the future. It's all like the, the gradation of climate impacts, everything we've been seeing around the world happening more frequently, more intensely, until you know global systems of infrastructure, food, water start to break down in ways that are hard to imagine for us right now. This all gets worse as things get hotter and hotter, driven by the fossil fuel industry, which has been lying. I think that's critical. Obviously, probably shouldn't say it in such an emotional way as what I've just said, because they're trying to be objective reporters. I'm speaking as a human right now, as a parent. Um, but they need to, reporters need to start giving this whole context. This is part of the we whole have story. five seconds, it's, Peter. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, do better media, please. <laughs> Peter Kalmus, climate activist, climate scientist at NASA's Jet Propulsion Lab, speaking on his own behalf, not on behalf of NASA. A happy birthday to Paul Powell. I'm Amy Goodman. Thanks so much for joining us. Democracy Now! is funded by viewers like you. Please give today at democracynow.org give.